the mummy. Curse. Pain was Eric Twoggle's god, and there was only one person who stood his way to attain it of a degree of fame, the Oculus's will, which he sought. That person was Crash Man, the man who supplied the funds for Third World's exploration. Excavations, Lindman's inheritance, wealth enabled him to buy anything, almost anything he wished, with little effort, his own part, through the labour of Third World's hands and mind. He sought to buy the one thing which Third World desired most for himself, nice worded, but legally unmistakable cause. Their contract indicated that Lindman was to be received the credit for most what Eric Fogwold had accomplished. Fogwold studied the thin, delicate features, mummified pieces for a moment. Then his lay centered on a rectangle of golden ornament, fastened over her bosom. There'd been nothing really unusual but a crystallinely tall golden asp at its center. The sacred serpent of Egypt was found everywhere in the art of the pharaohs. But when recognising the great value of the ornament, he followed his natural impulse, grand finger in it, to examine it more closely. Something entirely unprecedented ha- happened. A tiny catch had been re- released in response to send a spring of cold water, a leap with quickness of thought from the ass mouth. By some miraculous chance, the two forking needles at the end of the spring had slipped between the fingers of one of his hands about piercing the skin. It had, well, Eric forward a fairly certain idea he, what would have been that been his fate. Tony has was still protruded from his mouth cautiously. Though it clutched the spring just below the point where the needles had fastened. There would be the smoke broke on his forehead, he said. But he noticed the keenness of slender plates of bronze and hard bronze a thin, harmless-looking coating, lustrous green sunflakes that convert, convey, covered them. Before his mind, there was a conviction that there was some deadly concoction a pain prepared by a clever chemist, the Temple Laboratory of ancient Egypt. I am satisfied, Mummy, felt Alfred Gisford. That is the way Cass Lyman would die. Ferwin wrote a brief message for Lyman. Then he left the tent and sought out the sick, sad, among the tents of the workmen. In a few moments, minutes, a truck was hurrying down the shuddery gorge to walls. Luxor, in the Nile Valley, ten miles away. Now, for a reminder, reminder of what we must do, for we must have been again alone in the mummy. The mummy's breastplate bore a cookbook. Or a hyperglyphic royal bane, which Pharaoh Hall recognized as belonging to one of several of the thirteen Ressa and Kings of the 19th, 20th century. These ancient rulers each had each had a host of names and titles that it was not always easy to keep them straight. First fate was as fastened to the mummy. Wrapping by means of delicate wrought golden pin, the upper port potion, a witch fashioned in the form of scarab, a witch was fashioned in the form of scar- scarab, a sacred beetle, is also born in an almost like microscopic, remissing protectural species. Farrowed meets of the Great Valley, the bitter jury, is similar though less, though less, far less precious pin possession. He knew he could substitute his this one with another perfect impurity. Not only to let the cargo museum, museum take possession of it, it certainly would go, would go back up as it was by the law of Egypt, the God of Egypt, and teach. Throwing a pair of gloves, he made a change, quickly more being careful to run and covering his finger lines the pin. Which he was he substituted for the more valuable one. He coolly set to work on the most important task. He took out his jackknife and wrapped a con- corner of his handkerchief down its blade. With the blade thus padded, 
for what he would leave no telltale scratches on the metal. Gender work, a spray old spring, coil by coal, back in the golden ashen mouth. The nerve tangling, wrapping giant needle. But at last it was accomplished. A poison needles disappeared in the maul of the servant. In a claw like catch, held the ash's tongue in place. Later, when the truck returned from that star, so I was cool and collected the ready to act perfectly. So there was a wheel beside him with a short, poncy figure, a cast layman. A squeeze at the edge of the seat was another man forward, gave an inward start. He had not expected a third person, but no, it made no more, it made no difference. Hello, forward. The old man greeted with a kind, Broken Dorothy. Come as quickly as I could to see by myself just how good luck. Well, how good our luck has been. Raymond pointed, came beside him. This is Mohammed Abali. Raymond offered him strongly. Mr. Abali doesn't come along with me. Suddenly, because he's interested in your body, you are he's connected to, with the secret police of the Egyptian police, secret service of the Egyptian police. Part of the business. Is to prevent fortune to get the post We cover each ship to apologies for smuggling radio antiques out of the country. So his heart missed a beat when learning that this is a secret service plan. We quickly assure you, sir, it's all even better, all the better that he should. such a witness to the man's death. It would have a many painful explanations. Fate was indeed on his side. Now Lyman cut in. Let's have a look at the money you found. So what did you say you haven't examined it all yet? Well, so I said with a brief laugh. I did lift the lid and peek in. Curse got the better of me for that extent. I thought it best to wait until you were right here. So I did not go anything further. Three men entered forward tent, and there was the antique logical excavator. He witnessed the clever murder he had planned. Nothing went wrong. He enjoyed every bit of the little drama. Almost every bit. He gloated and wounded over the glowing explanation of surprise and pleasure. The lineman gave it face like a golden bubble out of the Egyptian bosom. Mary's bosom. He could be present with fingers green. Automatic gesture to finger the golden instrument to the death. Then the trigger was sprung and with a vicious twanging sound the golden ash struck. The one of all spring drove the poison needle deep into Cassie's lineman's shoulder. The horrified streak let back his features tore taught him to bring in a mingled fear, surprise and mortal agony. The silver toppled his blacking lips quivered he fell to the ground. As it was expected to be expected, but Mohammed Abel, he remained cool. The forward, he leapt to the man's side, and together they stretched his stiffening body on the floor of the tent. In the name of reason, what has happened? Forward demanded, seemingly regarding possession, possession of himself. What can we do for him? Abel and he was at Lyman's heart. He straightened, smiled faintly. There is nothing we can do for him, he said slowly. He is dead. A very rosy rose and strode to the mummy case where the spring on the rose of his tongue is still right vibrant. He examined the golden pectors perkable briefly. The dark science of ancient Egypt seems to be responsible, he said. The vices outwardly can have intended to work an undoing of what the true robbers. Rather strange, I've heard of such infernal machines, but I never saw one before. Of course, Mr. Feldman, in situations like this, it's necessary to make the most complicated complete investigation possible. Our present here is very obtuse. You may you say that no one touched anything in his coffin? Mohammed Abel turned to me. So you're not Feldman, he replied. As I said, I repealed it in, and that was all. I assure you that none of any of my men were allowed to leave everything's right hand. 
object and detect you looking at the moon. What was it? Mummy. This is very clear, Mr. Fogel. He stated. Look, he sat back for a finger. The pointing towards the lake. A leprous variety of scar for the pin. Which the fellow would had. Substituted for the pin with gold. And had originally supported the golden collection in the mummy's bosom. But it's not. What is clear, young? Okay. A mere invitation of non gifted. See, Mohammed Ali, I bear with gold. The scarf pin bears a touchy. Aiza, Ramane, Yolanda Ramen. One of the numerous mummies of Pharaoh. We now know the Romans used to follow. While well, the breastplate bears a touchy. So believe me, and I could draw in me, Madame. A remedies. The second. Between the rings of two lies a gap of fifty years. Odd, don't you think? But a princess, the whole scene was buried at least half a century before. Remedies the third. The center throne would wear Hamlet burying his picture. I think I understand, Mr. Ford. Even though his expert can make it, can make it such a trifling and not easy to notice mistake. The ancient minds did so many times, uh, had so many titles. It's difficult to remember them all correctly. But I must remind you that the immediate murder is quite punishable by death. Sorry, George Titan. This isn't the actual observation. Is the man in the memory? Mohammed Rabel shrugged. Well, without to count the coffin, so even since it was moved from the tomb, only you could have opened it. Our own oriental courts do not mince matters as Western juries do so often. Clearly, you substituted this uh, pin for another, probably much more valuable, one which you desire for yourself. You make any change which required that. You touched your breastplate completely. You could not remain aware of its sense of purpose. There can be only one conclusion. There will that you really should be put into death for your own to employ cash settlement. The evidence against you is set. But there are certain error dates you committed a perfect crime, evoking the dark wisdom of ancient Egyptian ancient Egypt, sitting you in your own cleverness. Only you were careless. Just one small aphorism. How trivial Mohammed Ali's tone was mocking, for his mind would come suddenly a trifle hazy. He was caught. If he could only shoot his way out of this, he turned the finger towards his right pocket. Stop, Mohammed Abel commanded. His fist bowls in his coat pocket. There was something irregular, menacing, clutched in that, thigh, that fist. His arms dropped to its, to its sides. All right, he said. I knew if you knew it would but a curse the Mumford Princess for trying to rob her coffin. An hour later, truck started out of, across the desert. Are you for luck, sir? In addition of Egyptian detective and a young Egyptian driver, it bore a canvas covered corpse, the coffin and body of an ancient priestess and a southern man, a man who watched the staring of an animal and took his eyes in a mummy case before him and wandered in hazy fashion about the strange tricks of human destiny.